Sheho! Car vlog! How you doing? Uncle Steph here. So, what's going on in the uh, interwebs? Well, I'm seeing CEOs now. Well, CTOs. I saw the CTO of, I think it was Microsoft. He said recently that uh, with regards to getting a degree in computer science, he said, get a degree, get a degree, even though they laid off a bunch of people. Why would the CTO of Microsoft be saying to people, get a degree, get a degree, when they're laying off, they laid off, I think, 6,000 people recently. That's relevant. Um, so what's actually happening is, um, as I said, there's a changeover happening from old school development to new school development. So new school development, of course, is all the AI stuff. Yeah, so the, why would the Microsoft CTO, who just fired 6,000 people, tell, publicly state, hey, hey, go to, go to computer science, it's still, there's still a huge demand for developers. Yeah, it's just that transition from old school development type to the new, to the new. To the new is not necessarily uh, building AI from scratch. I think there, that's still a lot of demand for that, of course, but it, it's about the whole AI development ecosystem, or meaning working with AI to build to build systems, to build software. So this is uh, agentic AI development and all that this encompasses. It's, um, it's the different, it's a new level of development, it's a new type of development, just like when uh, client-side development became a big thing. Once upon a time, People didn't use React, right? Lots, a lot of time, lots of time. I've seen this whole cycle. JavaScript was uh, was used on the front end, of course, but it was uh, secondary because we couldn't rely on JavaScript at at a certain point in time in development. So we used JavaScript to do some validations and a little bit of DOM, maybe. But uh, it wasn't the key. The key was this client, the server side, which you can control. But then Google Maps came out, and uh, eventually uh, the reliance on JavaScript for core functionality for a web app became a thing. And then React came out. And then, uh, what else? Uh, then you had Vue and Angular. Well, I think it was React, Angular, Vue, something like that. And there's probably 10,000 other JavaScript libraries, as you know, you know, JavaScript. But um, that was a paradigm shift. And when that came out, the old school of development that we used to do uh, just disappeared. Just disappeared. And uh, we didn't do it anymore. So, hmm. Or it faded quite fast. So this uh, whole web thing... It was very similar. Yeah, back at my place. So this, the web, uh, the JavaScript thing is very similar to what we're seeing now. Well, the JavaScript evolution, rather, is very similar to what we're seeing now with AI and AI-based development. So today, would I jump into React or would I jump into agentic development with AI, agentic, you'd look it up, agentic agent development. There's a huge amount of opportunity there if you look into it. So I would highly recommend that you do. So it's not replacing development, it's changing the old school way of development. Now, don't get me wrong, this is still gonna take time to fully manifest. I'm not talking like manifest, like the secret, and that kind of nonsense. I'm talking about just in terms of when you want to replace technology A with B, there is lag time. There is a period for this to happen because especially as you have a very well-established technology like the web stack and the current development uh, that we do, we've been doing this type of development now, like, you know, the web stack and uh, mobile development and so forth. This has been in place for many, many years now. I would, you know, 15 years maybe. And so there's so much investment in that People are not willing to just toss it in the garbage right away. It takes time to retool, to learn about the new style, and they're still working out the, the new style stuff as well. Like agentic development with AI still requires you have to change your plumbing to a certain extent. 
but it's very productive. Yeah, so don't think of the new AI development as a threat to development. It just means it is uh, the next evolution. That's why the CTO of Microsoft, even though they just laid off 6,000 people and a lot of developers, um, they're retooling for the new style. So that's all you gotta do. You have to jump into agentic development. You have to think of it as the new React, the new Angular, the new uh, paradigm, paradigm that we are now jumping into. Those who get into it early, like when I got into web development in back in the day early, had, had a huge advantage. You have a huge advantage as well. I'm not trying to sell you a course on this. I don't have a course on AI agentic development. If you want to learn that stuff, first you learn the fundamentals of development. I recommend the web stack because it's very it's universal. All these uh, new AI use case deployments are going to probably, for the most part, be deployed on the web technology, although I could see it being deployed on uh, thick client mobile as well. Um, native mobile, I should say. But really, once you know your fundamentals, you have to understand, even if you're an agentic AI developer, you still have to understand the fundamentals of development. Any experienced developer will tell you the big part of the job has nothing to do with writing the code. So a lot of other stuff, which I'm going to do here. But any decent beginner's course will teach you that. So if you know your foundations already, if you're comfortable with HTML5, CSS, you can do responsive websites, you understand CRUD, request response cycle, servers, clients, the stateless nature of the interwebs, you understand the basics of databases, you're ready to go, you've done that, you're ready to go into Agentic. You don't have to know React or Angular, you don't have to know Node, you don't have to, you don't have to. Those are technologies to learn on a need to nerd basis, as I like to say, need to nerd basis. That's my play on need to know. Anyway, what you should do, once you've done the fundamentals and you can build these simple things, just simple, simple entry level, then you got to jump into AI in a big way. Along the way, as you learn though, even if you're using my amazing training technology, which I developed years ago, uh, used by lots and lots of schools, anyway, Enough with the self-promotion, right? Even if you use my stuff, you should jump into using AI, AI to help you in the process. It will speed up the process of you learning to code. Whether it be Grok, whether it be GPT or, G or Gemini, which is Google's, whatever one. It doesn't really matter because I can't recommend one or the other right now in terms of, oh, should you use uh, Gemini? Or should you use Grok? Or should you use uh, ChatGPT? It changes all the time, like the, the, the models, the AI. When you say AI model, without getting into the nerd differences, it's the same, you know, they're model. Models are AIs, uh, LLMs, all the same. Um, when you get into that, of course, the, the, the AI developers are gonna, whoa, 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 whoa. As far as our, in terms of this discussion, they're the same. Whether you do Grok, Gemini, uh, GPT, and whatever, uh, there's many others out there, Claude, et cetera. Um, I can't recommend one or the other right now because they're always changing, they're always advancing. I think that the uh, difference between one or the other is gonna be nuanced. You know, Grok might be superior today with regards to coding, and then two weeks later, Claude comes up with an update and it's slightly superior. I think the the differences between the models now are marginal. It's like the difference between this camera and my other cinema cameras. It's like, mm, are you getting a huge advantage using, uh, this is a Sony versus my Canons back there. I'm not sure if the differences are so huge these days. They do have certain advantages, but anyway, same thing with the models. You have to, you have to become an expert in the models, by the way. You have to understand, oh, when GPT, uh, 04 mini makes sense versus 4.0, or when Grok 3 makes more sense versus, I don't know, uh, Gemini, you know? You're gonna have to start, and that's where you're gonna become highly valued as a developer, somebody who understands that landscape. One of the reasons I had success in development was because I could um, analyze projects, break them down to their simplest forms, and then make technology choices based on the needs of the particular project. As I got more experience, I learned to become technology agnostic. So I go back to the 90s. I was one of the very first adopters of Java. No question about it. 
and I uh, started learning Java when it just came out, I think it was 95 or something. And um, and I at one point I was a Java zealot. All I wanted to do was write all my apps in Java. I had developed my own Java framework, Pojo based with servlets, JSPs, and I did a lot of freelance work with Java and, and did very well. But then I was forced to learn other technologies based on uh, client requirements and so forth. And then I, I, I started becoming a little bit more advanced. I remembered my martial arts training. And my martial arts training taught me something very, very important. So what martial arts taught me is that you had to be language agnostic. You had to be open to different concepts, different techniques, different styles. So in the early 90s, I was training really hard. I wanted to become a professional fighter before I got sick, but uh, the USC even before the USC, the Gracies were fighting these, uh, I don't know, these kumite type of things. They would challenge people from different styles and beat them up. Uh, of course, the rules were very oriented towards jujitsu. But anyway, nonetheless, they, um, they shook up the whole martial arts world, uh, the Gracie family did, by uh, poking holes into the um, ideologies and the dogma of many martial arts styles. Basically, they showed them a lot of these schools, they weren't teaching people how to really how to fight. Anyhow, so uh, uh, why did I bring up the martial arts? Oh yeah, so what the USC taught the martial arts community that you had to be flexible. You couldn't just be a striker, you couldn't just be a grappler. You had to have a blend of tools. And you know, some people do very good where they were like, you know, 80% striking, 20% grappling. Uh, in the early days, it was like uh, it was like more like an 80-10, 90-10 in favor of grappling and submissions. But as the community, as the martial arts community, uh, spearheaded by the whole USC mixed martial art thing, and I guess also uh, there's some other similar type of uh, open combat uh, sports in Japan at the time. I forget the name all of a sudden. Anyway, I used to watch them all back in the day. So yeah, we learned that basically having flexibility in terms of how you interpret uh, what what uh, soft, not software, what martial arts you learned and how you studied combat. You got to think of martial arts like you do languages, programming languages or paradigms. You do judo. It's like a, it's like JavaScript. Uh, Jiu-jitsu is like TypeScript. You know. And Muay Thai is like, I don't know, Java. You know, you, get, you, get, you see what I'm saying? So as I remember back from my martial arts training, flexibility, uh, I did JKD a bit as well. Flexibility is key. It's key to being successful as a martial artist. Flexibility in terms of the styles you practice and how you fight and so forth. Same thing with programming. You learn. So I, I remember that. So I said, I got to be flexible. I got to be flexible. So I started... I became more advanced, just like I, when you become a more advanced fighter, where you stop thinking about your, of yourself as I am this stylist or that stylist. You are now a developer. A developer builds tools and systems, and they use the tools uh, best suited for the particular job at hand. So it went from thick client development to web, and then I went from Java to jumping into a whole bunch of different other languages, and then... Uh, so on and so forth. Then mobile came out, then you did native mobile or you didn't, depending on the needs of the job. So now we have AI, agentic develop. I highly, highly recommend that you embrace these technologies. Uh, you will get ahead. So there you go. So, so to conclude, the Microsoft CTO guy, I believe is giving good advice. Don't give up on software development. I think it's a lot of opportunity. Just understand that we're going through one of these paradigm shifts, which I have seen a few times. And those who jump on the new stuff, in this case, the AI agentic development, they're going to do very well. Now, just to clarify, I'm not saying you're just going to build AI-only tools. I'm saying you're going to leverage AI in all possible ways. So the easy thing to do, when you, if, you, if you've done your fundamentals, get a good IDE or code editor, and start working with the various AI um, models, the various AI uh, support 
that you can implement in the IDEs to speed up your, you know, super fancy code completion. Use AI to help you learn concepts that you don't understand. Use AI to start writing chunks of code for you. Yeah, so start leveraging AI. So you may not actually deploy an AI-specific implementation like a chatbot or something, but you will and you should be using AI to speed up the production of your normal coding. So instead of writing all your boilerplate React code from scratch, you know, structure, you know, architect what you need to do, chunk it up into more fine-grained components, and then have the AI address each of those components and see how it works. If you do it that way, you're going to see huge productivity gains, multiples. You're going to be multiples faster. So I'll end with this. I was talking to a startup, I guess, about a month ago. So, and that's what they did. They uh, they they create their startup based on a mobile app, and they used AI to develop this app. So it's not an AI app, but they used AI to develop the app, and they said they got it done. I think it's two months or three months, something like that, which would have been over a year prior to AI. So that's where the gain is. So yeah, that's it. You know what to do now. You know what to do? Jump on the new stuff. The Microsoft CTO, again, he's saying, learn software development, computer engineering stuff. You don't have, I, again, for me, if you know me, I, I've been a guy who says, unless you get it for free and you have the free time, I would say just study it on your own. And this is 100 times even more so uh, relevant now that AI is around. I think the whole... Uh, timelines for development is going to be compressed, meaning something that used to take a year will take get done in a month or two. And I think the business cycles uh, will be compressed, meaning uh, to get a company up and running that used to take a year, you get it done in a month or two. It's very exciting for the innovative. It's very exciting for people's time. It's the best time, I think, in my lifetime, and I'm really old. It's the best time in my lifetime, I think, to get into software and to get into freelancing to get into small business development you could build a very profitable business in record time now you could build a highly scaled or scaling business because of agents and ai which you normally uh you wouldn't have been you wouldn't have been able to do prior to the ai revolution here's the thing that people are not thinking about let me zoom in for this one because it's important i think because of ai the big, huge corporations are going to be at a disadvantage over light, nimble startups, one or two or three people that can code circles. Let me restate. Develop circles around them because if you have a well-structured agent-based development and business structure uh, and architecture, you can produce, outproduce the huge mega corporations who have this big overhead of bureaucracy and red tape you can just go whew. so imagine you're like you're like a super speedboat that can haul huge amounts of material that's a horrible analogy but you get the idea so yeah don't feel depressed my friends um people are going to do very well if they just adopt the new stuff be amongst the first mm -hmm.